This is a magical comic book about zombies. Inside the comic, there is a pair of 3D glasses. Once you put on these glasses, the zombies in the comic appear in the real world and start attacking humans. The story takes place in a bookstore. Due to the rise of online reading and smartphones, Sarah's bookstore is on the verge of closing. The landlord, Cooper, adds to the problem by demanding higher rent or else he will terminate their lease next month. With no choice left, Sarah plans to save costs by firing Dawn, the only female employee in the store. However, since her son Martin is in a relationship with Dawn, Sarah decides to discuss it with Martin first. Understanding his mother's difficult situation, Martin, caught between love and family, chooses the latter. He decides to personally break the news to Dawn. Despite being prepared, Martin hesitates as he watches Dawn diligently cleaning the clutter in the basement. Just as Martin struggles to start the conversation, Dawn accidentally drops a box she's holding. Seeing the box with the words figure 10 written on it, Martin seemed to have found some treasure, and he hurriedly asked Dawn to open the box. Unexpectedly, there are several zombies comic books inside. As a hardcore zombie fan, Martin is thrilled. These comics could be the unfinished works of George Romero, the pioneer of zombie films and the creator of Night of the Living Dead from Fig. 10 Studio. These comics, never before seen on the market, are surely of considerable value. They may just be the key to reviving the bookshop. If so, Dawn wouldn't have to leave. At that moment, Dawn shockingly discovers a pair of 3D glasses tucked in the last page of a comic. Curious, Martin tries on the glasses. Suddenly, a zombie on the cover of the comic seems to move. What the fuck? What the fuck? Startled, Martin quickly takes off the glasses. Unable to believe the realism, he rushes to show the glasses to his mother. Unaware that his action has brought a terrifying entity into reality, left behind to tidy up. Dawn hears strange noises but sees nothing when she turns around. Thinking it's an illusion, she continues organizing the comics. Unaware that something has entered the room behind her. Meanwhile, Martin gives the comic to Sarah, claiming that it will save their bookshop. But Sarah dismisses it as just an ordinary comic. As Martin is about to show her the miracle of the glasses, a customer in military attire walks in. Martin leads the customer to his preferred horror comics. But as he turns to leave, a man's scream is heard. Martin turns back to find a horrifying scene. The customer lies suspended in the air in a bizarre pose. With a piece of flesh torn from his neck, Martin recognizes this pose from somewhere. Shocked, he pulls up the comic and finds an identical scene. Putting on the 3D glasses, he sees a zombie holding and gnawing at the customer. When Martin removes the glasses, the zombie disappears. Clearly, the zombies can only be seen with the 3D glasses. Martin, terrified, kept stepping back. At that moment, Sarah also arrived. The customer was already on the ground, dead, his body gruesomely disfigured by the zombie, which had now vanished without a trace. Sarah was utterly confused about what had happened, just as Martin was about to call for help. He saw the zombie again through the 3D glasses, seeing the zombies coming at them. He had no time to explain and hurriedly dragged his mother into a nearby storage room and blocked the door with a mop. The sound of the zombie pounding on the door followed immediately. Sarah, not seeing the zombie, thought Martin was playing a cruel prank to avoid firing Dawn. Martin had no choice but to explain that the zombies from the comic book had come to life. But Sarah found such a ridiculous story hard to believe. Suddenly, the noise outside stopped. And at that moment, Dawn, who was in the office, called. Martin quickly told Dawn everything and asked her to lock the office door and wait for them. Dawn, too, was skeptical. However, before she could respond, something invisible struck the office window clearly. The zombie had set its sights on Dawn. A scream was heard. Realizing the danger, Martin tried to go save her, only to find the storage door jammed. In this crisis, he thought of the comic book, hoping it held a solution to end all this. Turning to the last page, Martin saw George's portrait and quickly put on the glasses. As the room lit up with strange lights, George appeared in front of Martin's eyes, recognizing his surroundings as his own former studio. George looked around, meeting his idol up close for the first time. Martin was thrilled and excitedly greeted him. Meanwhile, Sarah was once again bewildered. Martin hurriedly handed the glasses to Sarah. Seeing this miraculous scene, she finally believed her son's words. Putting the glasses back on, Martin quickly explained the situation to George and asked for a solution, but the solution George suggested was just like in the movies, use various weapons to destroy the zombies' heads. Just then, Dawn called. Zombies had broken into the room and were attacking her. In a panic, Martin accidentally opened the door and rushed with Sarah to rescue her. However, when they arrived, 
they witnessed the overhead fan decapitating the zombie. Dawn, still in shock, had no idea what had happened. It was only when Martin handed the glasses to Dawn that she saw the fallen zombie. They thought the crisis was over, but just as Martin was handling the zombie's bodies, they realized that the customer who had just been bitten to death had disappeared. They had overlooked a serious problem. Those bitten would also turn into zombies. Realizing this, Martin quickly put on the glasses and indeed found the customer. Now a zombie, wandering aimlessly around the bookstore, since this zombie was infected in reality, they could see it without glasses. What's even more frightening is that the zombies even found another comic book on the cashier's counter with a pair of glasses in it. Intelligently, it put on the glasses and summoned more zombies from the comic book. The situation was now completely out of control. They hurriedly blocked the door and again asked George for advice, as he was the creator of the comics. George then realized the cause of the problem. Originally, he had sent a few completed copies of the comic to the publisher while it was still unfinished. Because as a never-before-seen 3D comic, it was sure to sell for a good price. However, the maker of the 3D glasses unexpectedly raised the price just before publication. After not getting the publisher's permission, the glasses maker got angry and asked his wizard uncle to put a spell on all the 3D glasses. They thought it was a bluff, but now it seemed real. Suddenly, the wooden door was broken, and a horde of zombies rushed in. In the chaos, Sarah was accidentally caught by zombies, and Dawn was knocked down by one. Martin tried to save his mother but was unable to do anything helplessly watching her being dragged away by zombies. Fortunately, Dawn was saved by George using a fire extinguisher. Seeing the situation spiraling out of control, George suddenly had an idea. Since these zombies came from the comic, writing a new scene to erase them all might end this. With a triancy attitude, George began to act. Just then, zombies attacked Dawn again. At the crucial moment, George writes the ending of the comic strip, destroying glasses and zombies. This method worked. As Martin destroyed the glasses, the zombie entangling Dawn disappeared. After the crisis was resolved, George left contentedly, but soon after, Cooper arrived at the shop. Seeing the mess, Cooper exploded in anger, demanding they move out immediately. Unexpectedly, Sarah, who had turned into a zombie, suddenly pounced and bit Cooper on the arm. Although the zombies from the comic had disappeared, the mutated Sarah in reality still existed. It seemed the zombie crisis was far from over. The most disgusting monster I've ever seen, as it mutated from various garbage in the sewer. The story takes place in a cheap apartment building. The tenants hear noises coming from the sewers every day, so they bring it to the attention of their snarky landlady, Victoria. Under their constant complaints and pressure, Victoria reluctantly called Linus, a plumber, to check what the problem was. As they entered the basement, a foul smell hit them, obviously from a blockage in the sewer pipes. Victoria, however, insulted the tenants for their lack of hygiene, accusing them of throwing everything down the drains. Fortunately, after some inspection, Linus said it wasn't a big issue and just needed to clear the blockage, but out of professional ethics, Linus advised Victoria to replace the pipes, as they were made of lead and harmful to humans, especially children. Victoria, however, dismissed his concerns. She only cared about her money, not others' health. She even warned Linus not to meddle, or she would complain to his company. Saying this, Victoria left nonchalantly. Facing such a corrupt Victoria, Linus could only silently wish her a long life. At that moment, a cat appeared in the basement. Linus started to inspect the sewer pipes, but something seemed to be moving inside. Making loud noises, the cat seemed to sense danger, as Linus intently watched the broken pipe, unaware that something inside was also watching him. In a blink, that unknown creature crawled out from a pipe behind him and set its sights on the cat. However, at this moment, Linus was completely unaware of the danger, still meticulously inspecting the damaged pipe. Only when a tragic scream of the cat came from behind did Linus slowly look up to discover that the cat had vanished, leaving only a chilling trail of blood leading to the sewer pipe. This scared Linus. Although he didn't know what it was, he just wanted to get up fast. But as he was leaving, he heard playful noises coming from upstairs. After a brief hesitation, the kind-hearted Linus decided not to leave. He knocked on the tenants' doors upstairs, determined to help them solve the problem. Seeing Linus was a plumber, Janet eagerly led him into her apartment. She was fed up with the clogged drains and mentioned hearing strange noises from the sink. Her daughter had also seen something furry in the toilet. Hearing Janet's description, Linus thought it might be a large rat. After making arrangements, Janet left to pick up her daughter from school leaving Linus alone in the house. But as soon as Janet left, 
Linus heard strange noises seemingly coming from the pipes in the walls. Following the sound, Linus found a hole in the wall, and there was a foul odor emanating from it. So it seemed that the rat was hiding in there. However, while Linus was carefully inspecting, an unidentified mass suddenly swept past him. A slimy trail was left on the floor, still thinking it was just a big rat. Linus opened the cabinet door to try and catch it. Unexpectedly, a sticky mass flew at him and clung to his arm. Terrified and confused, Linus struggled as the sticky mass tightly wound around his arm, causing him great pain. No matter what he did, he couldn't get free. Linus tried banging against the fridge and hitting his arm with plates, but nothing helped. It wasn't until Linus clamped the creature in a drawer and tore the skin off his arm that he was able to free himself. But before Linus could catch his breath, the creature attacked again. In a moment of crisis, Linus grabbed a pipe and pinned the creature to the floor. However, as Linus gloated, the creature cunningly leaped from the pipe onto Linus's face. Linus, brother! Struggling as the creature tightened its grip, Linus felt himself suffocating, with a strong will to survive. Linus tore the creature off his face and threw it against the wall. Like an indestructible cockroach, the creature prepared to attack again. Fortunately, Janet arrived just in time, trapping the creature in a metal bucket. From the characteristics of the monster, Linus thought it was a mutation of the rubbish in the sewerage pipe. So he was going to call the CDC, but Janet stopped him, claiming to have a better idea. Seeing Janet with a wicked grin on her face, Linus quickly figured out what to do. Linus called Victoria, falsely claiming the plumbing was fixed and asking her to come over. Victoria, impatiently driving over, was unaware that she had fallen into a trap set by the tenants. Tired of her constant abuse and insults, the tenants saw this as an opportunity to teach her a lesson. Victoria, with a glass of wine in her hand, didn't realize the danger she was in. Upon realizing the plumbing wasn't actually fixed and that she had been deceived, she began to berate Linus and the tenants relentlessly. Fueled by alcohol, led by Janet, the tenants approached her with weapons, seeing their serious demeanor. The once arrogant Victoria quickly became submissive and started apologizing incessantly. Janet pointed out that while they could tolerate the insults and abuse, they couldn't forgive Victoria's knowing use of harmful lead pipes, endangering the children's safety. Victoria tried to quell their anger by offering free rent, but it was too late. As she backed onto a manhole cover, the creature inside extended its tentacles and grabbed her. <laughs> Victoria's desperate pleas for help in a bizarre pose garnered no sympathy from the tenants. Finally, amid her cries of despair, the creature dragged her down. <laughs> After the incident, the tenants put down their weapons and left the scene. From then on, the sewer pipes were never clogged again. The tenants had come to peacefully coexist with the creature, even feeding it regularly. Clearly, for the tenants, Victoria was the real monster.